we left off today in class um, talking about longshore current. Now in this uh, video we're going to talk about erosional and depositional shores. Um, erosional is really easy, there's just a few things you need to know. Depositional is a much more longer drawn out one, we're going to split it into two parts. So I guess right off the bat you should know that erosional shores are typically found on the west coast. They have um, the faint picture in the background you can see is an erosional shore. Uh, there's cliffs and it's usually due to tectonic uplift lifting up the bedrock and then the waves acting upon it or eroding away the rock. So all these underlying terms are ones you're going to have to be able to find on a diagram. So um, the headlands, what happened is there's usually tectonic uplift which lifts the rock underneath um, up above sea level due to shifting plates and things like that. As the headlands erode, the, that the wave cut bench um, becomes the headlands and they erode and the shoreline retreats. As it retreats, the differences in the geology of the area um, means that not everything is worn away evenly. So what happens is you get wave cut cliffs and they frequently have sort of this sickle shape you can see in this picture back here, right in this area. Right here you can see they form that sickle area and that's because um, this eroded area was um, of a softer rock and this area was of a harder rock. So. Um, there's that. They form wave cut cliffs. Um, the wave cut cliffs, due to the nature of the um, waves acting at the base of them, form sea caves. If sea caves form on along a shore, suppose you have a shore that's um, looking at it from above. You have an area where the, the headlands, um, you have headlands here, and you have wave cut cliffs in here. If they erode, say, a sea cave on this side and on this side, Eventually, they can pop through and make what we call a sea arch. Um, eventually, if that whole thing erodes through, if we basically get rid of all of this in here, and um, you have like a little island, uh, that's basically what we call a sea stack. And what's left back, um, you know, erodes more and more. Then um, the rate of erosion is going to be influenced primarily by the composition of the bedrock, exposure to wave, and tidal range. If you think about it, if you have a very small tidal range, the rocks are hitting the same area over and over. Excuse me, the waves are hitting the rocks in the same area over and over again. So you have less um, um, time for it, you know, in between. So there's more erosion in that area. This is the classic diagram from the book of all the features. You have the headlands, the wave cut cliff. Um, sea caves, sea arches, and eventually sea stacks. You should know not only be able to identify these, oh, and, and all the Ocean Bowl kids really like the blowhole. They think that one's funny. Um, you should know what order the cave arches and stacks form, so make sure you look that up. Uh, this is what they actually look like in real life, and, the, and they look pretty much like the diagram. We have the sea stack and sea arch uh, found along the Oregon coast a place called La Push, um, and that's, you know, a famous area. The sea arches are uh, very perfectly formed. Sea arches will frequently collapse, though, when there's heavy storms. So you can see there's a lot more to talk about with depositional beaches. Um, you might want to pause here and write down all the crap you want to write down. But when you have depositional shores, it's because you have more sediment being deposited than you have being eroded away. And where does that sediment come from? Uh, it frequently comes from... Um, Sediment being carried to uh, the beaches by rivers, erosion of the rock that's naturally there, though that's a little bit lesser, and the erosion of inland rocks being washed out to sea and making basically beach sand. So the waves then distribute that sediment that's been um, pumped out onto the ocean along the edges of the continental shelves, and that distribution is primarily moved by longshore drift, though sand um, can be moved by storms and wind as well. So let's get into the actual features. There's the spit. It's a linear ridge of sediment um, that extends in the direction of longshore drift. Hopefully you know this one. You go to school on one. And if you notice, Sandy Hook extends towards the north. Longshore current it goes towards the north primarily in this direction. Most of your spits will be indicative of the direction of longshore current. Bay barrier or bay mouth bar um, is when a spit it extends across the bay to connect with the mainland. These are actually very rare, especially in the United States, because they tend to cut off areas that are important for transport. The tombolo is a unique one. It sounds like it's a spit, but it's a spit where at the end of it, 
there's um, a true island as opposed to a barrier island. Now, a barrier island is a, is a deposit of sand. A true island has bedrock underneath it. So a tombolo has to connect something to um, rock. And they typically are perpendicular to wave direction. And this may not make sense, but I'll draw it on the board for you tomorrow. And hopefully it'll make better sense. Somebody remind me. And then one of the other features is barrier islands. Um, barrier islands are typically parallel to the coast. We have so many of them on the east coast of the United States, uh, 300 or so, depending on you know how storms move them around. And they are separated from the mainland by a lagoon. Um, we even used to have them in Monmouth County. There was a series of barrier islands that stretched from Sandy Hook, when it was still a barrier island, all the way down to Manasquan. But the Manasquan jetty so starved our beaches of sediment that um, they all kind of fell apart. This is a diagram that has the typical um, um, depositional features that we talked about. One of the ones I didn't mention before was a delta. Um, to have a delta, you need to have a river. Uh, so please make note that's a river right there and sand is deposited. Let's talk about the tombolo real quick. So they're, they're perpendicular to waves. So what happens is as the wave approaches, um, it begins to refract. Remember we talked about how waves can refract around features. And as the waves hit each other, they're going to drop all of their sediment as they come around the island this way. When they hit each other, they'll drop their sediment, and that's why the tombolo itself is always perpendicular to the waves. Hopefully that made some sense. Classic picture from the book. Unfortunately, it's a little sad now, post-Sandy. Uh, this is Maniloking, and this was a classic barrier island, uh, such as it was. It is no more. It would actually look more like that now. Um, with all that area taken away and a lot of this as well, um, which kind of brings the idea barrier islands are transient in nature. Uh, we're going to talk about how they form and how they move, um, but it's just a reality. And all of the beautiful things Army Corps of Engineers has given us doesn't really change the fact that these things move. Um, I'll go into this and then we'll talk about their movement, I guess, in the next one. When, when you look at a cross-section of the barrier island, starting on the beach side, you have all those air things we talked about, um, like the shore and the coast and whatever. Uh, but you have an ocean beach um, on one side. Then you have dunes. They tend to be uh, mafala on this coast. And um, the, 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 along the southeast uh, Atlantic coast, dunes are less well-developed. I, I put why here. I was going to ask you. Um, hopefully you realize it's because of the, um, the, the direction at which, uh, waves come in. Um, and there's a special type of dune in, uh, Peru called the Barkan. I guess you don't really need to know that. If you continue walking from the beach towards the bay, you'll come across a barrier flat. Um, it's also known, we call it around here, the holly forest. It's basically, um, you'll have grasses, then bushes like poison ivy and cedar, eventually a true forest. And then when you pop out the other side of the forest, you'll have the salt marsh, which is dominated by Spartina patens, all the way down to the lagoon or mud flat. Oh, and the low salt marsh in between. Uh, this is a classic picture. This is not in your book, um, but you can, um, we have ocean side over here. And this would be ocean side. And this would be bay. And you would encounter all of the things we've talked about so far as you walked that way. I will talk about the formation of Barrier Islands in the next video.